Hello everyone and welcome to our first webinar of 2019. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. My name's V from the Marketing Department here at SMT uh, and I'll be introducing our presenters shortly who will be conducting today's webinar. Uh, we have lots of interest for this upcoming scripting fun functionality so we're really excited to be able to preview what will be coming up in our next release. Uh, Stuart Jones, one of our senior software engineers, will be running through scripting as per the agenda that was on our website. Of course, if you've got any questions, please send them through using the live chat box that you'll be able to see on your screen. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can throughout the webinar, uh, so keep them coming. But if anything is not covered due to time, uh, we'll get back to you via our support team a bit later on after the webinar is finished. I hope you can all hear, our, um, hear us and see our screen. Please also let us know if you're experiencing any problems and we can try and assist. Um, however, before I hand over to Stuart, I would like to remind you all that this webinar is being recorded, so it will be available on our website shortly afterwards for you to watch on demand. Thank you again for joining us today. We'll just take a few more minutes to allow for some more attendees to join us. Okay, so scripting is a module that lets you, you write your own functionality for master. It's going to be available in master 10, um, which should be released relatively soon. Um, scripting is a bit like writing VBA macros for Excel. Um, it allows you to build models, run analyses, save to files, add new custom properties, and even write standalone console apps and web applications. Um, so I won't be showing the PowerPoints or um, talking at great length. I'll be just going through some scripting examples. Um, so the first example will be writing a script from scratch to show building a, a simple example of a, a gear pair, a couple of shafts and some power loads. Um, Rexus and GDE import and export, which are two custom scripts that we've written as examples and to provide functionality in Master 10. Um, an example of a web service to run master analyses on a server, so a bit, a bit like SMT Cloud. Um, but this is an example that we'll provide for you to download for, for free. Um, a tolerance study using a scripted property that models the effect of changing crowning microgeometry on bias modification. Um, this example shows that it's possible to use scripted properties with custom reporting, PST, and design space search. Um, we'll add a button to master to set the first element angle to be in the direction of highest load, and an MVH example um, that gets the node with the highest acceleration for a selected part. So if I start by showing you the scripting tab that you get in master 10, um, I won't show you all of the tab to start with. I'll ju you'll just learn about it as I do some examples. So to start with, I'll click this Create Code Solution. Now a solution is Microsoft na Microsoft's name for a, a collection of scripts, a collection of sort of user-defined properties. Um, so I'll call this solution webinar 2 perhaps um, you can choose the language at the moment we support C sharp and VB.net we do have plans to support Python at some point in the future um, and then we've got some various options create example properties will create some simple examples for you to look at um, select solution in Windows Explorer will open a open a win Windows Explorer with the solution selected for you to open, so I'll check that. Um, create Visual Studio Code Editor Tasks. We'll create some, some pre-built tasks to help you develop in Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code is 
is a free version of Visual Studio, um, Microsoft's development software. Um, this, this is free even for enterprise users and it supports everything that we need for scripting. So I'd, I'd recommend you get Visual Studio Code. Uh, the version that you'll see me programming in will be um, Visual Studio, perhaps Enterprise. It's something we get as part of our Microsoft Gold Partnership. Um, so it will create this solution in my code solutions directory here. And this directory is specified in the editor settings, if you want to change that. So I've clicked Create, and it's created a the code solution that I can double click and open. So this makes it easy for you to get used to using Visual Studio because we set up, it can be quite complicated to set up code projects, um, but Master will do all this for you. So this is where you'll start to write your code and we can make it even even easier for you to start writing code um, by clicking add code solution property so we we are wanting to write a script on on a root assembly so we're wanting to extend root assembly add add a button that will take a root assembly and add a couple of shafts and a gear pair and some bearings and run analyses. Um, so I'll click, click root assembly. I could also, you could also add scripts on to say the design would work for this. So these are the types that are available from the, the object selected in the top left. So if I say add code solution property, we bring up this dialog. Again, we support C sharp and vb.net. I'll call this simple example. <coughs> and this property name is the name that will appear when you try and select custom properties in custom reporting and design space search, PST, runner. Then we select the property type. So double is a real number, double precision real number, float is a real number ints are integers, string is text, boolean is true false. The question marks mean it can be a number or null or a boolean or null, but we're going to choose a command which will create a button. The property accessor, um, this is, you're just telling this dialog to only create a getter, so this will only, you can't actually set a value on this, you can only can only get a value. So if it was a, if you'd chosen double here and you had a getter, you wouldn't be able to set the value of this double. You can only return it. If you had a getter and setter, you would be able to set the value and the new value would appear here. So the, the measurement type, length short would typically be millimeters Everything in master is stored in SI units, so it would come into your code in SI units, but it would automatically display in reports and editors as um, millimeters, for example. But in, in this example, I'm creating a button, so a command. Um, fully qualified types. So the, the idea of this control is that we just copy paste this. So I'm copying go into Visual Studio and paste it in and it's made it very easy to uh, to start writing our code. I can also say fully qualified types and that will put in the fully qualified namespace of the types. So I'll just do part of this example because it can get a bit tedious watching me type all the time. So we want to add a, a couple of shafts to the root assembly. So 
So this added, adds a shaft. You can see we've got some default uh, default settings, length of 0.1. Again, these are in meters. We've got an outer diameter and a bore, a default name. So we're just going to stick with the defaults. Add another shaft. We want to add a gear pair as well. So you can see here I've got a list of a list of options to choose from. Um, this this here is an SMT type. This is a, an SMT API type um, that we've we've generated and automatically referenced here in master API. Um, so root assembly is a type that represents the root assembly you've got selected in master shaft. So this, this here is a, an API shaft. Um, var is just a shorthand for a shorthand for um, shaft model dot shaft. Um, it is a it's a fully qualified type. It's just um, it's just an easy way of writing it. So the 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 objects in master of themselves got they've got properties um, and methods that we've auto generated. Um, so in this root assembly, you can see that we've got the cylindrical gear sets that exist on this root assembly. It's quite, it's quite e it makes it quite easy to write scripts in master that we've got the full power of Visual Studio's um, help with this. So we, want, we know that we want to add a gear set. So instead of having to type add cylindrical gear pair, I can just type gear, gear pair and it's automatically found the correct method. Now for the centre distance, I'll choose something that looks sensible for this example. I think perhaps, perhaps this might work. Um, get the first gear from the gear set. So gear set is an object of type cylindrical gear set. Um, it has a property called cylindrical gears that you can index into. So that's the first gear. That's the second gear. And then we want to mount the gears on the shaft. So we can say, we can say gear one, mount on, passing in the shaft. And I think we want to put it in the middle of the shaft. So we'll say, so the shaft has a length. We'll put it at halfway in the shaft. And we'll do the same with gear two. So this, this is a very simple script that adds two shafts, adds a gear pair, gets the gears and mounts them on the shaft. Um, I mean, you can you can compile this um, if you. So the traditional way of programming would be that you'd compile this and then run it. Um, if I if I find this, so it's created a compiled binary for us to use. Now, master can use these compiled binaries. We call them plugins in scripting. Um, but I'll show that, show that you don't need Visual Studio to compile it, so I've just deleted that. All we've done is save it. We go back into master. If we click refresh, it will, Visual, master itself compiles the script. So in theory, you, you could just use Notepad um, to write the script, although it would be very difficult because you wouldn't have the help that Visual Studio gets you gives you with the um, with all the, the various options. 
Um, so here on the bottom right, you can see we've got this extra simple example. Um, the location we've got as an external code lo solution. So you can have code solutions or plugins. I'll explain that in more detail later. Um, this shows the property details. Um, so the measurement type, the symbol, the property type, everything like that is taken from this attribute here. So this, it might look quite daunting having attributes and this is called an extension method. It looks quite daunting, but master helps you write, helps you write the difficult look looking bit and then the rest of your script will actually be an almost natural language. You can see what's happening here. We're adding shafts, adding a gear pair, getting the gears and mounting them on the shafts. So we have a calculate button in the bottom right. If I click that, it runs the script. And you'll see it's, it's done what we wanted. It's created a gear pair with default settings and mounted it on two shafts. Now that is it's a very simple example. Um, I'll show you. I've got some examples I made earlier, um, just because you don't want to see me slowly typing for an hour. Um, so I'm going to. So this this is the scripting settings dialog. So you can see that we can change where our code solutions are stored and our plugins are stored. Again, more, of, more about plugins later. Um, the solutions that we are referencing are listed at the bottom here. Um, you can reference multiple solutions and master will just collect all of the scripts for the multiple solutions. But I'm going to remove this the one that I just created and click add existing code solution. Um, and I've got, got some examples I made earlier here. So I click OK. Master is again compiling the solutions. Um, so that webinar example solution is here. So you'd open this, but I've already got, got it open here. And I've got a similar simple example. Um, it's, it's just doing a bit more. Um, so here, the root assembly is getting the design, um, calling clear design to remove um, parts that have already been added. Then it's adding a couple of shafts adding bearings, adding bearings from the catalogue. So it's possible to get get rolling bearings from the catalogue. Um, so we've mounted the bearings on the shafts, set the shaft profile to, to match the bearing bore. Um, and there we're adding the gear set, mounting it, adding power loads. Um, adding design states, due cycles and load cases, and then getting the analyses and running them. So if I go into master now, and run the simple example, you'll see it's still simple, a bit more complicated than before. Um, it has run system deflection. So it is possible to run analyses. I mean, you could have a very quick and easy parametric study example where you modify, I don't know, modify something like the shaft profile and um, detect changes to misalignments. You could do that sort of thing. Or, or you could create a, create a design and use it in the website example that I'm going to show in a, in a bit. Um, so I'll just show you 
here if we we can modify the code just have to save it go into master click refresh in the scripting tab that recompiles the solution and when we run the example you can see it's changed the shaft diameter so it's quite easy to use we'll be providing lots of examples for you to to look at and you'll be able to modify our ex examples quite easily to try and get used to it so that's the that's the simple example um, the next example is Rexus so Rexus is um, it's a an XML format for storing gearbox data um, we had a customer request to support Re the Rexus standard um, we decided to implement that in scripting as an, an ex example for customers to copy um, but also it's it means that customers would be able to modify it if the Rexus standard changes we would be able to give new scripts to customers via our app store quite easily um, so we wouldn't have to make a new release of master to provide new functionality so here's the app store we've had to call it SMT store for copyright reasons it's uh, the the SMT store is hosted on one of our servers um, so if I click download, it will download a plugin um, for my servers. Now you might remember I said that a plugin was a compiled binary. So I'll show you that. When we close the SMT store, it compiles the plugin in to master, and you can see we've now got Rexus input and output. Um, the plugins stored in our plugin directory here you can see it's a DLL so you can create your own plugins by compiling the code as I showed, as I showed earlier um, that means that you can distribute your functionality without allowing people to modify the code so you're protecting your intellectual property So I'll, I'll load the scooter gear box, something a bit more complicated than this. And here we have the Rexus scripts. You can see that they're located in the plugins directory. Um, when I click calculate, it's outputting this file um, to this directory. So I'll just, just show you what it's done. So it's created an XML um, file that's basically storing all of the gearbox data. Um, so what have we got? We've got shaft sections here. We've got cylindrical gears, flank geometry, bearing details. Um, we don't support all of Rexus yet. Um, but as we speak, somebody is work, working on supporting more of it. Um, we're, we're hoping we, it should be relatively fully supported quite soon. So if I open a new design, we want to test the Rexus input, which is a script that will take that XML file and load it into master. So this, this has now been loaded in via the script, it's been output from one script into an XML file and then input into the into a, another master design and you can see when I switch between the designs the only thing you can really see changing are the names of the gears um, Similar to Rexus, we have 
GDE, which stands for Gear Data Exchange. Um, so that is a, an XML file format for storing gear set data. So it, just the gear set data in more detail than Rexus, um, but doesn't it won't store um, the sort of shaft details or bearing details that sort of thing. So we're clicking download. So it's downloading the source code now from our server. Um, it's going to save it as a zip, but it will extract that zip and then compile the code into master. Um. So here you can see I've, I've actually got two GDE output uh, scripts um, because I was testing this earlier. If we click calculate, It's going to export the input gear pair to an XML file. Okay. So if we go to a new design, we've got a scripted property on the design to input the GDE data. Um, I can't remember what it was called. It would be, I think it's this one. Yeah, the input gear pair. So here you go. It's it's output to an XML file and then input that. <coughs> I'll quickly show you the script. It's a bit a bit more complicated to show in this webinar, but I will. I might as well show you. So we will provide this script, uh, the code as well. Um, so you can see, you can see in this file we have the scripted properties we saw earlier. Um, and here we're using the API, um, reading stuff from the XML and setting things in the API. Um, just a, a mention on the API. The API um, basically wraps our custom reporting code. So we've, we've aimed to make everything that you can do in master possible in scripting. So all of these, all of these properties um, you see will have been turned into properties in the API, and you would be able to access access them in your scripts. Um, in total, we've got four and a half thousand classes and fifteen or sixteen thousand properties. Um, it should be possible to do almost almost anything you can think of, and if if you can think of things that aren't possible, um, if if you let us know, we'll have a go at adding that to the API. Okay, the next example is an example of is the, the website. So this is the SMT cloud, um, as you might pretentiously call it. Um, so this it's a very, it's a very sort of simple, scripting makes this much easier than you might expect. So it took probably less than two days for one of our software engineers to do this. Um, so the, the idea is that you will um, search the bearing catalogue and then run a an ana uh, master analysis on that bearing. So we have, we have some console applications running. So the, the important thing to notice is that you don't need master running in order to have have these running. So these are these are services. This is an example of master as a service. So we have a bearing catalog service that will take data from this page and return 
return a bearing and then we have another service a bearing calculation service <coughs> that will run the calculation on that on that bearing now a, a, web, a web programmer somebody with some experience would find this quite easy to do it's, it sounds quite complicated um, but it is it's relatively easy the the amount of programming required isn't that much um, so the catalog API so this is the the code for getting the bearing bearing from the catalog you can see there's not that much of it it's just getting the getting the various properties from the page and then just calling search for rolling bearing on one of our um, API objects um, so this script gets a bearing and then we have a script that calculates um, it puts a bearing in the middle of a shaft with a point load and an input and output power load and we'll run the analysis on that so I'll, I'll show you on the website um, put in some values So I click search, it's going to send this data to the to the service we've got. We've got here. And it's found there you go, three thousand seven hundred results. So this is, is quite a nice service. We've got some nice ASCII ASCII art at the top. Um, I think we'll even provide that for you if you want it. We we can select a bearing. Not sure whether the values I'm going to put in will be sensible for the um, for the type of bearing. So this is specifying the values for the point load and the power loads. So click view report. That goes off to. The other script, the bearing calculation script, and it runs it runs system deflection on the on the bearing example, and puts the results in a report. So this this is just getting the HTML. Um, yeah, I did. I've got. I copy pasted the code from here into a script so that I could show you the. Um, the the simple example it's working on. So if I find webinar examples, so there we go. Um, get the root assembly, add a shaft, add a bearing from the catalog. So I, I've just hard coded this, but in the example it was um, that was user specified from the form. Mount the bearing on the shaft. Add the point loads and power loads. Um, this that example is on a design, so it's a scripted property on a design. So I need to select a design in the types tree view. Um, so the the types tree view basically gives some context um, to the the types that were available to access from the object selected in the assembly tree view. Um, it's got this option to only show types with user-defined properties because things can be quite difficult to, to find. Um, I, so I click the design. You can see the examples we've got available on, on the design. Click Calculate. And you can see it's, well, it's a bearing on a shaft with with a point load and some power loads. Uh, I'll quickly show you the, the other scripts I saw. 
um, create a car transaxle gear model. So this is the one of our example files, um, car transaxle gearbox. It's a, a big example, much bigger than the simple design, but it still it didn't take me that long to code. And we'll provide the script for you to look at. Um, so there you go. So it's quite a lot of the adding parts is supported quite well in the API. It's possible to create quite complicated des designs. Okay, the next example is, is more of an engineering type example. You might find it a bit more interesting. Um, it's setting the first element angle um, to be in the position of highest load. So this is a customer request. Somebody asked us to asked us to add this in the software. And we do intend to add it as an option in the software, not just in scripting. Um, but we might as well use it as an example to show you what scripting can do. It's, it's also worthwhile mentioning that the, the angle of highest load isn't necessarily the the lowest doesn't necessarily give the lowest life, so the the customer really just wanted just wanted this feature so that they could compare master with a legacy gearbox product. Um, so if I run system deflection, um, so we'll we'll run the script on this bearing. I turn on the force arrows. You can see. You can see that the force is mostly in, in is in this direction. So we want to rotate the first element angle. So that the element is about here, with these these two arrow, arrows about about equal. Um, so it's on, yeah, it's on a bearing load case. I won't just click calculate this time. I'll add it to a custom report to show you that you can add buttons into master. Um, oh, you can see I've already added it here. I'll do it again. So just like normal custom reporting, you can access scripted properties. Um, so I'm on the root assembly. This is a root assembly load case. We want to add the property onto bearing load cases. So I add that. Um, I'll add the first element angle as well so that we can see it. And I'll add the name. So if I go to the examples, okay. so here it is. This, this is perhaps one of the more le less obvious scripts. We've got a, a bearing load case. Um, we can get the bearing and the bearing design from that load case. Um, we can get the system deflection and run the system deflection. So this analysis of you can pass in any analysis type, so you'd you'd be able to do gear wine and and all sorts if you wanted to. We perform the analysis. You get the results, <coughs> and then you want to get the force arrow that we saw here. You want to get this, so we're wanting to set the um, the first element angle to be the x and y components of this force arrow. So you get that as a vector here. So it's the fo the force on the inner race will be the resultant force on the elements. I think. So you get the linear force. the The other option will be angular. Um, I think. Yeah, you don't get many options. Um, so then from that you can use trigonometry to set the first element angle 
I then call perform analysis just so that you don't lose your results. So if we go back into master, go to the editor, it was input mid bearing, click run on that script, and it set it to minus 59.1769. And you'll see that the, f the first element is now pointing in the direction of the load. When we add this into master properly, we might have to check it converges um, because moving the element can affect the analysis. This might be good enough. But I think it's... So you can see it would be quite annoying. So I'll click one again just to show you that the, the number will change a bit. That's why we might have to use a solver or, or something when we add it into master prop properly. <clears throat> so it'd be quite annoying to have to go through all of the bearings, clicking run if you had a large design. So I'll quickly show you that um, it's quite easy to add a new property on root assembly load case to go through all of the bearing load cases and set the element angle. So again, a command because it's a button. Copy the code that Master's given us. So I'm going to put it in the same file. So here where it says to do implement this method, I'm going to iterate over all of the bearing load cases in the root assembly code case. So you can see that bearings returns a collection of bearing load case. And we already have the code to set the first element angle for a single bearing load case. So I save that, go into master, click refresh. So I could run it here, but it's quite nice to see it in the custom report. So this time the property is on the root assembly load case. So you see, it's, you, this only shows properties that are available on the type that you've got, in the same way that custom reporting does. So when I click run now, that will go into the, the script and for every bearing, set the first element angle for the highest load. So it's possible to have one script call other scripts that you've created. So I click run. So it's a bit slower because it's performing more system deflections, but it's, there you go, it's set. Set the first element angle on all the bounds. So the Next example is the, the microgeometry example, the, to the tolerance study. Um, um, lead crowning with bias. So this, this is an example of a property with, with a getter and a setter. So here, the lead crowning we return is just the crowning relief quite easy. In the setter, this, this property is basically, it sets the bias um, to account for manufacturing processes when, to, when, they, when you try and achieve crowning on a microgeometry. So we know that there is some relationship between setting crowning and bias. This, this is something like, something like that relationship. I wouldn't take this um, as gospel truth because I'm not really it's just an example but you can see that we're so we're getting the crowning that somebody's typed in and then there's some relationship between the
profile and lead limits, the helix angle and the crowning to set the bias. Um, so I'll go into microgeometry. And I'll just add that property straight away. So that property was on a cylindrical gear flank microgeometry. So I've had to look in the in the custom reporting tree for for that object. I'll just add it here. I'll also add um, I'll add the properties that we're setting uh, relief at lower and upper limit. <coughs> So if I set that, you can see that it's it set the um, the bias relief. So that these are the the bias upper, to upper and lower limit. Um, it will have set the crowning as well um, to ten. So it's possible to write custom properties to sort of to do extra set other properties. Um, in master by adding them to editors using custom reporting. Um, so for the tolerance study, we can go to PST. So I'll quickly set this up. We're going to do a Monte Carlo analysis. Um, 50 steps changing design to make it a bit easier. Um, go to setup. I want to find I want to find that custom property. So that is on the gear flank microgeometry. There you go. Give it a mean value of ten. Um, Data logging setup. Um, we we know that there's a relationship between sort of crowning and bias and P to P T T E. So you might want to check that. Um, so I'll add that as a result. There we go. Run the analysis. So you can see in the report for the input gear pair, it shows you the uh, the peak tweet to you changing. I think in this case, it's it looks quite large, but this is just an example to show you. So we've got more results here. It's changed the. You can see it li lists the scripted property as well in the input variables. Um, you can do the same thing in Design Space Search. Oh, sorry. I want I want microgeometry for the microgeometry example. Right. So again, we find it using custom reporting. Going through an absolute range. Um, so five to fifty. Number of steps fifty to match the PST. I'm going to fix the wheel. Okay. So these scripted properties could do almost anything you want. Um, so it's 
you need to have a think about what, what could be useful. I know having talked to a few customers, they've got some good ideas. There you go, that looks like quite a nice relationship. So you could you can select scripted properties from the the results here as well if you wanted to, if you had an interesting an interesting result. Okay, the last example is an MVH example, which I know is something that a lot of people are interested in. Um, for this, I'll use the simple housing example. So here um, we have a part gear wine analysis, which is basically a gear wine analysis of a select the selected part. So we we're wanting to find the node with maximum acceleration, which at the moment in master you, you need to look to chart to do. So you you might want to do this as part of a bigger script, or it, you might want to add it to a custom report. Um, so. We go through the part gear one analysis results and the orders, go through the nodes, um, getting the acceleration. And if the current node's acceleration is greater than the linear acceleration, then we store the name of that node. Um, so if I select the housing, Click calculate. You can see it's saying that the node with maximum acceleration is the left bearing outer at around 450. Um, so we can we can fact check that by going to the dynamic response chart. Um, yeah. So we want to see all the nodes, and you can see. Oh, we want the response type to be acceleration. So you can see that the maximum is at about 450, and if we highlight it, it's the left bearing outer. So that's really just a, a simple example to show you that you can access MVH properties in scripting. Um, I think that's it for the examples. I'll just... Um, just go over what we plan for the future with scripting. Um, we're planning at some point in the future to access scripted properties um, during the analysis. Um, some people call that co-simulation. So you would be able to write a scripted property that called another program to do an advanced return an advanced stiffness for a part or something like that. Um, I mentioned earlier we intend to support Python at some point in the future and also use the undo stack in master to automatically generate scripts to make it a bit easier for people. Okay. If, if nobody's got any questions, I'll, I think I'll finish there. Um, if, if you've got any questions, email SMT support or me, and we're, we're always happy to hear from our customers. Um, if you want a, a beta version, uh, I've got a question, can you record macros? So in the future we will um, we'll allow that from the undo stack, um, but you can't yet. If you want a beta version, let me know and we'll send you one. Um, I've got another question about Python. Um, we don't know how soon it is that we'll support Python, but we do, we do have a plan, um, a plan to support Python. I will say that C# -sharp and VB.net are easier, are less daunting than you might expect, especially with the examples that we provide. 
um, but we do we do fully intend to support Python because we, we get asked that question a lot. Okay, thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. Um, I think we'll, we'll finish there. If you've got any more questions, like Stuart said, um, please send them through. Details of our next webinar will be on our website shortly in the next few weeks. Um, we are anticipating it will be towards the end of May. Um, so have a look on our website for details about that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the webinar will be on our website as well for you to watch afterwards on demand. So, so thank you for joining us today and we'll see you in the next webinar.